Pfizer launched the first clinical trial in the U.S. studying how the coronavirus vaccine affects pregnant women. The study will include 4,000 women globally. Those who are between 24 and 34 weeks of pregnancy are eligible to participate. Researchers will monitor each woman for 7 to 10 months. Pfizer also announced it submitted new data to the FDA showing its vaccine can be stored at higher temperatures. Currently, the vials are stored at negative 112 to negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit, but now the company recommends storage at negative 13 to 5 degrees, which is more common in pharmaceutical freezers. Joining us now to talk more about all of this is physician and immunotherapy scientist, Dr. Leo Nisola. Dr. Nisola, welcome. Great to see you again. Now, this is a significant temperature difference. The company is now suggesting to store its vaccine. If the FDA approves the new storage recommendations, could this be a game changer in both U.S. and global vaccination efforts? Hi, Tanya. Yes, definitely. Uh, both news that you just shared are, are very good and positive news. Uh, we need to get vaccines into hard to reach communities. And uh, those new storage uh, guidance and uh, will allow us to be able to have those vaccine vials uh, at a uh, safer and more stable um, uh, situation in places that are hard to reach. So uh, these are positive news and, and potentially a game changer as well. Uh, great to see also that Pfizer is uh, having those clinical studies uh, for patients that are pregnant. Uh, and, and, and I'm very excited about that as well. Yeah, so let's delve into that a little bit more. Uh, Pfizer, Pfizer and BioNTech's new study looking at the effect their vaccine has on pregnant women. Um, when, when we talk about pregnant women, uh, you know, it, it's there are a lot of concerns, right? It's not just how the vaccine affects the mother, it's how the vaccine uh, affects the child, right? So is it a little more complicated to study pregnant women? Well, we need to study them, but let's go back a little bit. Uh, about in, uh, in December, mid-December, the American uh, College of OBGYN published an advisory note uh, stating that uh, they are recommending um, folks that are pregnant, um, and uh, breastfeeding to uh, receive the vaccines, um, even though we didn't have data to support that. Uh, so I I'm very happy to see that we are actually taking the steps that we need to ensure that uh, pregnant women are safe and the fetuses are safe uh, by receiving these vaccines. And we can only do that when we test them in clinical trials that are controlled um, and in the way that the, the drug makers are, are doing it right now. So I'm very happy to see these efforts. Uh, we should also uh, be looking into information uh, in regards to the safety around these vaccines for children. Uh, Dr. Fauci uh, mentioned uh, today that we will see more data coming in on the vaccine mm -hmm. safety uh, on uh, some children by uh, that age uh, 12 and older by fall um, and younger kids by Q1 2022. So both are hopeful. And I want to ask uh, you about uh, the but kids. But it does take time. Hold, you hold Hold that thought, because I do want to ask you about the kids in just a second, but I, I want to stick with pregnant women for just a moment, because there's a study out of the of University of Washington finding the mortality rate among pregnant women with COVID is 13 times higher than other similarly aged patients. Um, if pregnant women are at such a higher risk of severe infection, shouldn't they have been included in the initial testing phase for the vaccine or did did doctors just not know that they were so susceptible so uh, what we were trying to do back in the day was to deliver um, safe and effective vaccines uh, in a speed of sound when, but we are building the plane as we fly it we're in the middle of the pandemic and i feel very lucky that we were able to deliver and, and, and develop those vaccines but now at the same speed we need to uh, deliver those vaccines into people's arms now as the uh, american board um, guidance came in late last year uh, saying that we should not withheld those doses for uh, pregnant women and for women that are breastfeeding, because there isn't uh, uh, um, any safety concern uh, for them, but yet we have not tested them. So the, the right thing to do, it's actually to run those clinical studies, to run those trials with those patient populations that are more specific. And, and that's usually how it's done. 
Right. And, and you point that out, you know, even though the study is just getting underway, that both the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and the CDC say pregnant women can get vaccinated. So what is your specific advice to expectant mothers right now who are still on the fence about the vaccine? Uh, do you feel we already know enough about its safety for pregnant women to confidently um, you know, suggest your patients who are pregnant get the vaccine? It's a very complicated um, uh, situation that folks need to navigate with their own private uh, doctors, uh, with their own primary doctors that understand their body and their particularities as well, whether they have an underlying condition, whether they are exposed to the virus in a, a more frequent uh, way, whether they are working on an essential in-person jobs. So it, it, there isn't a one-size-fits-all uh, response to this question because we have not yet tested these uh, in clinical studies, which for me, it's, it's the, the gold standard uh, on, on making those decisions. So again, uh, for breastfeeding mothers, for, for pregnant women, um, I would recommend uh, reaching out to their uh, providers uh, and have this uh, you know, heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Is it um, okay for me to receive this vaccine right now, or should I wait for those clinical studies? And doctor, now getting to the children, Pfizer and BioNTech also announced plans to study the vaccine in children ages 5 to 11. This is huge news since the vaccine is currently not authorized for use to anyone under the age of 16 in the U.S. Uh, what can you tell us about this study? So uh, first, uh, the, the vaccine is safe and effective for adults. There is no reason why we are uh, concerned that it wouldn't be uh, the same for children. But there is a, uh, a, a better uh, need for understanding of the implications of these vaccinations on children. Uh, and that's why you need those clinical studies. So um, again, uh, maybe uh, by the time that these studies are concluded, we would see that they perhaps would need a one dose and, uh, and, and then receive the second dose in a, a, a later time than the adults. But we still don't know. So it's important for, for drug makers to, to make those decisions based on science, based on clinical trials, uh, running those clinical studies on children. Um, it's very important. Um, although we know from the past year that children are not <clears throat> severely affected by this disease, uh, we still need to uh, protect them and immunize them. So I'm expecting to see, based on what Dr. Uh, Fauci said today at the White House uh, press briefing, that by fall um, uh, we will see some results on children that are 12 uh, years old and uh, older. And by the beginning of next year, the results for children that are under the age of five. And how do these uh, tests on children work? I mean, obviously they need, doctors need to get the parents' consent. but. Do the children also consent? I mean, they're minors, so it's a little bit trickier. It's very tricky, and, and I think it will require uh, uh, patients, um, meaning children, parents, uh, and uh, providers to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. I think you'd be surprised by how smart these kids are, uh, and they're very much aware. I think uh, living in the era that we are living today of streaming uh, and uh, being online, they are exposed to, to the news as well. So I've, I've come across a few uh, uh, kids uh, lately, um, and, and they're pretty much uh, uh, aware of what's going on, and they are excited about getting the vaccine. Uh, I know my do, son uh, can't wait to get it. He's, uh, yes, they do. All right. Well, Dr. Leo Nisala, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.